I'm a Harvard lawyer. Let's watch some Legally Blonde together. This is what I need to become to be serious. What? Practically deformed? No. A law student. Going to law school to get her ex back, huh? L? Law school? It's a perfectly respectable place, Daddy. Honey, you were first runner-up at the Miss Hawaiian Tropics contest. Why are you going to throw that all away? Going to Harvard is the only way I'm going to get the love of my life back. Do not go to law school to chase love. Please don't do that. There are a lot of people that go to law school for the wrong reasons, like they want to make money, they have no idea what else to do in their career, and in some cases, maybe they are chasing the love of their life who broke up with them. But you should really only go to law school if you want the JD and you want to be a practicing lawyer. Otherwise, you're probably not going to be very happy when you get to practice. Harvard Law School? That's right. What, like it's hard? But that's a top three school. Oh, I have a 4.0. We're no longer top yes. three. But your major is fashion merchandising. Harvard won't be impressed that you aced history of polka dots. <laughs> what are your backups? I don't need backups. I'm going to Harvard. Well then, you'll need excellent recommendations from your professors. Okay. And a heck of an admissions essay. And at least a 175 on your LSATs. I once had to judge a tidy whitey contest for lamb to cap a pie. Trust me, I can handle anything. <laughs> Thanks. Some of what the counselor said in this scene is true and some of it isn't. First of all, law schools aren't going to punish you if you did a relatively easy major. They will, however, give your GPA a slight boost if you did a difficult major like molecular cell biology or engineering. But admissions offices aren't going to punish you for having a relatively easier major like fashion. The rest of what the counselor said is accurate. Elle is going to need great letters of recommendation and a really compelling personal statement to convince Harvard that she is the right candidate for them. And though you don't need a 175 plus on the LSAT, it will definitely help your chances of getting in. Essay, I'm gonna tell all of you at Harvard why I'm gonna make an amazing lawyer. <laughs> As president of my sorority, I'm skilled at commanding the attention of a room and discussing very important issues. It has come to my attention that the maintenance staff is switching our toilet paper from Charmin to generic. All those opposed to chafing, please say aye. Bye. You cannot do a video application for law schools, but some law schools do do in-person or virtual interviews. However, that's pretty rare. And actually Harvard, as it turns out, is one of those schools that conducts these interviews. But those interviews tend to be pretty basic. We're talking 10 to 15 minutes, and they're more a personality fit test than anything else. And that's why you should vote for me, Elle Woods, future lawyer for the class of 2004. <laughs> Like, she does have a 4.0 from CULA, and she got a 179 on her LSATs. That's crazy. A fashion major? Well, sir, we've never had one before, and aren't we always looking for diversity? Her list of extracurricular activities is impressive. She was in a Ricky Martin video. Clearly, she's interested in music. She also designed a line of faux fur panties for her sorority's charity project. Uh-huh, she's a friend to the animals as well as a philanthropist. <coughs> Elle Woods. Welcome to Harvard. Okay, first of all, admissions committees are much more diverse today than is portrayed in this film, which of course is a bit old. Even the admissions committee at Harvard Law School, it is not all old white dudes any longer. There are women, there are people of color, and there are younger people on the admissions committees too. Also, in the admissions process, this isn't really how it works, where you have one applicant that comes in front of all of the committee members and then they openly discuss it. Instead, applications go through multiple rounds. The first round is usually based purely on your statistics, like your GPA and your LSAT. If you don't get enough points from your GPA and your LSAT, depending on the school you're applying to, your application might be cut right then and there. And even in the subsequent rounds, it's not at all clear if there's an open discourse and discussion between the admissions officers on any one applicant. Instead, certain admissions officers have certain tasks like reviewing the personal statement, reviewing the resume, or in some cases, yes, making the final decision as to whether an applicant should get in or not. And with a 4.0 and a 179, I'm really not surprised that L got into Harvard Law School because those stats are killer. Wyeth House. Our new house for the next Law students years. wish. Oh, are you thirsty? 
Law students do not get the fancy houses at Harvard. That is an undergraduate thing. Hey, Brad, check out Malibu Barbie. Where's the beach, honey? <laughs> Good boy. Warner's gonna be so excited to see you. Guys, this way. This ain't LA. Come on, Bruiser. This ain't LA. It's gonna be so exciting. Now don't be scared. Everyone will love you. First of all, I think the movie did a great job portraying that just subtle microaggressions from the East Coasters against the West Coasters. Like, check out the Malibu Barbie and this ain't LA. I'm not saying that East Coasters are rude or like mean people, but as a West Coaster who did law school at Harvard on the East Coast, I definitely found that folks on the East Coast tend to be a bit colder. And as I mentioned during the scene, law students at Harvard do not get the fancy houses or like the finals clubs. That is definitely a Harvard undergraduate thing. There are dorms at Harvard Law School, but they do not look as nice as that. Okay, welcome to law school. This is the part where we go around in a circle and everyone says a little bit about themselves. Let's start with you. Uh, my name is David Kidney. I have a master's in Russian literature, a PhD in biochemistry, and for the last 18 months I've been uh, deworming orphans in Somalia. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Underachiever you? much? Hey, how you doing? I'm Enid Wexler. Got a PhD from Berkeley in Women's Studies, emphasis in the history of combat. And uh, last year, I single-handedly organized the march for lesbians against drunk driving. Killer. Thanks. Good times. Aaron Mitchell. I graduated first in my class from Princeton. I have an IQ of 187. <laughs> and it's been suggested that Stephen Hawking stole his brief history of time from my fourth grade paper. <laughs> cool. Okay. Me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Elle Woods, and this is Bruiser Woods, and we're both Gemini vegetarians. I have a bachelor's <laughs> degree in fashion merchandising from CULA, <laughs> and I was a Zeta Lambda Nu sweetheart, president of my sorority, Delta Nu, and last year I was homecoming queen. Oh, two weeks ago, I saw Cameron Diaz at Fred Siegel, and I talked her out of buying this truly heinous Angora sweater. Whoever said orange was the new pink was seriously disturbed. <laughs> Look at their faces. All right, I gotta say, as much of a joke as that scene kind of was, making fun of how all of these students at Harvard Law School have these crazy intense backgrounds, it's pretty accurate. To make it into Harvard Law School or Yale Law School, Stanford Law School, any of these top institutions, requires you to be a stellar, stellar applicant. And stellar can take many different forms. I had one classmate who was a backup dancer for Britney Spears and Beyonce. I had another who had already founded several nonprofits by the time they were in undergrad and had raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for them already. Some of my classmates served in Afghanistan and Iraq. Others were startup founders with successful exits already under their belt. There were activists, there were whip smart PhDs, and then there were students kind of like myself who were high academic achievers all the way until they got into Harvard Law School. Harvard really is is one of the most powerful academic brands and the admissions offices know that. So they really look for the best and the brightest and the most stellar applicants that they know will reflect better on their brand in the future as well. L? Warner? Uh, I totally forgot you go here. What are you talking about? Uh, I, I'm sorry, are you here to see me? No, silly. I go here. You, you go where? Harvard. Law school. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? <gasps> oh my gosh, Warner, it's gonna be so great. That is the most iconic scene and iconic line ever, man. What, like it's hard? I can't tell you the number of times that that phrase was uttered in emails and on newsletters and between students when I was on campus at Harvard Law School. The student culture there loves Legally Blonde. Now, I assume all of you have read pages one through 48 and are now well-versed in subject matter jurisdiction. Who can tell us about Gordon versus Steele? Let's call on someone from the heart, sir. She's chosen. Elle Woods. Oh. <laughs> um, actually, um, I wasn't aware that we had an assignment. Oh, not what you want to say. Oh. 
especially when you're cold called in lecture. You will get roasted, and it's embarrassing, obviously. But it's also not graded. Vivian Kensington, do you think it's acceptable that Ms. Woods is not prepared? No. I mean, what is she supposed to say? I don't. Would you support my decision to ask her to leave class and to Ooh. return only when she is prepared? That's harsh. Absolutely. <laughs> well, buh bye Ouch. That's not a great way to start. You're one all year. Okay, first of all, if you didn't do the reading and you disclose that to the professor, these days it's really unlikely the professor is gonna go as far as to tell you that you need to leave lecture. Sometimes they'll give you a little bit of attitude and say, wow, you're not even doing your reading, okay. Or they say that you better be prepared for the next lecture because they're gonna come back to you. But when I was in law school and classmates didn't know the answer or they didn't do the reading, the professor would just move on. They wouldn't really punish them or tell them to leave. Now, at the same time, I think this scene does a great job portraying what law school lectures actually look and feel like, which is by the Socratic method. The Socratic method is how most law professors teach their classes. And what it really looks and feels like is after the students do a reading, they come into class and then the professor will cold call different students and grill them on the facts of the cases, the reasoning, why the judges said this versus that, and then spark a discussion and discourse between the students and the professor on the concepts that they are learning. Now, some people like myself don't really think that this is an effective way to teach because a lot of the time, like 60% of lecture just boils down to people throwing out their own ideas when the actual case law could be condensed and taught in a much shorter amount of time. But the idea of the Socratic method is to teach you to think like a lawyer, and that also requires being called out on the spot for the facts of the case and being able to defend your position and think critically on the spot with somebody on the other side, in this case, the professor, grilling you about the case. Competing against each other for the top grade in this class. You will also be competing for one of my firm's highly coveted four internship spots next year where you will get to assist on actual cases. I've never seen a professor do that, like Not offer bad. work, Begin. internships. <laughs> Sometimes they'll offer research positions. Now let's commence with our usual torture. Ms. Woods, would you rather have a client who committed a crime malum in se or malum prohibitum? Neither. And why is that? I would rather have a client who's innocent. <laughs> it's kind Dare of a fair dream, answer. Ms. Woods. Dodging the question, but kind of fair answer. Ms. Kensington, which would you prefer? Malum prohibitum. Because then the client would have committed a regulatory infraction as opposed to a dangerous crime. Well done, Ms. Kensington. I actually think Elle's answer was pretty funny and also a fair one, but Vivian's is more accurate. A malum in se crime is something that is bad by nature. And this is something that people generally, morally speaking, will say is wrong, like murder or rape. In contrast, a crime that is malum in prohibitum is something that we have collectively decided as society is technically a crime, even if it's not the most morally questionable crime. For example, jaywalking or failing to pay your taxes on time. And did you see how the professor went directly from Elle to Vivian when he wasn't satisfied with Elle's answer, that's pretty accurate as to how these professors will lead their Socratic teaching method in law school. Hi, everybody. Elle, well, what are you doing here? I've come to join your study group. And look, I brought sustenance. Who's first? Mm-mm, mm-mm, our group is full. Oh, is this like an RSVP thing? No, it's like a smart people thing. Shh. And as Viv said, Gunners. we're full. Come on, guys, we can make room for one more. Ow. We've already assigned the outlines. The answer is no. Mean. So petty, dude. Oh, okay. I'll just leave then. Bye. Hey, maybe there's like a sorority you could like join instead, like. You know, if you had come to a rush party, I would have at least been nice to you. Oh, is that before you voted against me and then called me a dyke behind my back? I don't use that word. 
You must have heard it from Vivian. So yeah, in law schools, like in most graduate schools or even undergrad schools, you have study groups. And sometimes those study groups can be exclusive. In fact, there's this famous story of a Harvard Law School alumni. His name is Ted Cruz. He's a US Senator and also an election denier. And the story is that when he was in law school, he had applications to join his study group. You had to submit your resume, you had to submit your undergraduate GPA, and only the best of the best applicants were allowed into Ted Cruz's study group. So in this scene where Elle is being excluded from the smart people study group, that's kind of accurate as to how some of these law students can be, yes, even at Harvard. But by and large, at most law schools, and Harvard included, students are very collaborative, they're generous with their notes, and if you want to join somebody else's study group, most of the time, they will probably say yes. If your goal is to get into Harvard Law School, or any law school for that matter, then I have something for you. It's a comprehensive 30-page getting into law school guide that I wrote that shares with you all of the tips and tricks to get into the law school of your dreams. In this guide, I walk through the best strategies for getting the best GPA, whether you should take the LSAT or GRE and general strategizing so how you can map out your undergrad to optimize to get into the best law school possible. I made it the price of a cup of coffee and the link is down in the caption. And every dollar that goes towards this guide is poured right back into this channel to help bring you content like this. As always, thank you for the support. Smash that sub button and I will see you around. What, like it's hard?